we confronted the Russians uh, in Berlin when they blockaded Berlin and refused to let supplies come into Berlin by rail, road, and canal. We supplied Berlin entirely by air for a period of a little over a year, although the Berlin airlift uh, ran for 15 months. I flew 190 trips into Berlin with 10 tons of coal. The Berlin airlift set the standards for airlift that are followed even today in terms of air traffic control, loading, unloading aircraft, and that sort of thing. The aircraft today are all jets, they're much bigger, and uh, it's, it's a different picture, but it's still uh, sustaining people and troops by air. It was also the first battle of the so-called Cold War where we confronted uh, the Russians, and, and we were successful. We were determined that the Russians uh, Soviet Union was not going to force us out of Berlin. We flew over hostile territory and landed at airfields that were entirely surrounded by hostile territory. I, in fact, had bought, dropped bombs on Germany many times. And now we were coming back a couple of years later to uh, help Germany survive the starvation and the problems that they had with the, with the Russians. And that was very touching to me, uh, for, uh, helping and serving for our former enemies. And it brought out to me that uh, the German people were never our enemies. The reason I started dropping candy and gum to kids in Berlin, because I was visiting with some at Tempelhof, barbed wire fence at Tempelhof one day, and the kids knew from a uniform, of course, that American might have some gum and candy. But not one of 30 kids, age 18 to about 14, I mean not 18, about eight years old, about 14, were there on the other side of the barbed wire fence from me. And I talked to them for an hour, and they were cheering me up. I said, hey, you're going to have some bad weather to fly through here if come fall. But don't worry about it. We don't have to have enough to eat. Just give us a little and don't stop coming. Someday we'll have enough to eat, but if we lose our freedom, we'll never get it back. It blew my mind. Here these kids were giving me an instruction about freedom and, and to, to not get discouraged flying. Well, I was there an hour. I had a jeep waiting for me, a base ops, to take me over to Hitler's bunker in the Berlin Brigade. I couldn't see those things flying in. We'd just fly and take off and go back and get more food. I'd taken my sleep time to go there. So I ran back, started to run back to get the jeep. And then a little voice said, hey, these kids are different. But I was taking my sleeping time then, and I, I didn't know when I'd ever be able to, to, to meet those kids again. About that time, an airplane, airplane came over my head, landed on the runway right behind me. And I just got the idea all of a sudden, boy, if I airmail it, I can deliver it tomorrow, and I won't lose any sleep. And so I said to the kids, look, if you come back tomorrow and promise to share it, when I come into land over your head, I'll drop enough that you can all have it if you'll share it. I said, yavold, yavold. So I said, watch the airplanes coming over Temple off over the beacon. 1,500 feet, the weather's good, you can see me, and I can see you. Wiggle the wings of that big old four-inch airplane, get ready, that's the one. Ah, they said, that's great. Let's get this thing started. Well, that's, that's how it started. Came back the next day and looked down there, and there was those 30 kids right in a the knot. They hadn't told another soul. Wiggle the wings of the airplane, they just went crazy. Well, we, we couldn't get much gum and candy. The military was rationed. We only buy a limited amount. And I got my co-pilot and engineer to give me their ration. So I got three rations and a big double handful. And boy, that did smell good. Chocolate and gum, and I can just imagine what those kids would do. And I thought, boy, that's heavy enough. Hit him in the head going 110 miles an hour and make the wrong impression. So I put it in three handkerchief parachutes and pushed it out the flare chute when they came over their heads. And, and that's how it started. Put a little fondness in especially the Berlin people for the Americans. That was something I have no idea what it did to the Russians. I knew they weren't very happy with us. <laughs> Certain portions of history are re reduced to a sentence or a paragraph in some of the history books. I have no idea why they did that. It's, okay. it's not very, very warming. <laughs>